For more on this story, we take you to Lutuli House where this is currently happening. Growth in China, South Africa's largest single national export partner, has slowed with unpredictable implications for export prices. The war in Ukraine, others call it conflict in Ukraine, has unsettled global markets and may lead to economic decoupling between blocks of countries. In the short run, the conflict has led to increase in food prices, fuel, wheat, and fertilizers. The long-run implication for global trade and investment will, however, take longer to understand and quantify. It is within this context that the ANC has to craft an economic strategy that will help us tackle our challenges, and also in the national interest of South Africa. The ANC is still committed to pursuing its economic objectives, with the framework of a mixed economy in terms of making sure that we do have a role, we understand that we have a role to play in terms of public and private sector. This means that government will continue with the efforts to rebuild the state corporations and expand the state capacity in the economy so that if necessary, it will be able to make economic interventions which facilitate the growth and development of the economy. This will require us to focus on building a capable and ethical developmental state. The state has to have the capacity to implement the policies and to ensure that it is able to create the conditions that will crowd in skills and investment in South African economy. When we look at the paper that was released, which is the Reconstruction and Growth and Transformation, which became the basis of the document that was released by government and tabled by the president in parliament, which is the economic reconstruction and recovery plan. In the plan that is currently being implemented in government, which is the ERRP, it was negotiated between government, business, labor, and community representatives. I must say that there were issues that some which led to now the reworking on the social compact part of it. But the objective was to build a consensus around the reform interventions we, which we all agreed as social partners, that they are important and guided by the policies of the NC, that we require to reignite growth, investment, and job creation. Specifically in the ERRP, they were focused in terms of seven pillars. We spoke about aggressive infrastructure investment, employment oriented strategically localization, reindustrialization, and export promotion, energy security, support for tourism recovery and growth, green economic intervention, mass public employment interventions, macroeconomic interventions, strengthening of food security, and also ensuring that the land is addressed, the land issues are addressed. But we understood that this was underpinned by ensuring that gender equality and economic inclusion of women and youth were at the center of our recovery. In drafting the documents, there, were, there was a recognition that a need for new proposals should be built on foundations established among social partners. Now, we're taking this approach of recapping where we are so that when we deal with the issues around the current proposals, all of us understand that we are not starting from scratch, we are not reinventing the wheel, but we are taking you through in terms of this is where we're coming from and the, where we are going. Now, we are of the view that going forward, the process should be more explicit about trade-offs, time frames, contributions, sacrifices to be made by specific constituencies towards rebuilding the economy, mechanisms to ensure accountability for non-delivery of on the commitment made must also be put in place. Now, overall, ANC strategy for structural reform and rapidly accelerated and inclusive economic growth is built on the following pillars: structural reforms of network industries to facilitate expanded investment in sectors such as electricity, telecoms, water, rail, and road infrastructure. Strengthening industrial policy intervention using a range of instruments, including development finance, public procurement, and linkages to key areas such as agriculture and energy. Macroeconomic stability to be achieved through policies to accelerate economic growth, as well as through carefully management of expenditure and taxation, as well as balance and effective monetary, monetary policy. Closer coordination between government and social partners with the aim of accelerating job creation, 
by lifting investment levels from current levels of around 15% of GDP to the NDP's target of 25% to 30% of GDP. So you can see the gap where we are sitting. An expanded re regional trade with other countries on African continent and the wider wo world through the development of well-connected and cost-effective logistical, infrastructural, and financial nodes. Our main long-term targets have to reflect the needs of our people. Through democratic discussion, we must identify priority goals which we wish to achieve during the current phase of the NDR. Now, the NDP's goals of economic transformation by 2030 are clearly not being achieved. It would be important to reset our timeframes and refocus on our key economic goals. This could include, for instance, achieving the following by 2020, 2035, an increase in the share of all household income for the poorest, 80% of the households, which is currently around 30% today. An increase in the employment ratio, the share of adults with employment. This which is sitting at under 40% in 2021. A doubling in the number of small formal businesses, including farms, with black ownership of commercial farmland rising, and increase the share of black owned formal businesses. An increase in the minimum wage, in real terms per year, an increase in union density for formal workers, which was at around 35% in 2019, an increase in the share of young people aged between 18 to 25 with metric so that we can increase their employability. So this is about not only just metric or, or skilling, but skills that are needed for the economy. An increase in the share of women employment in the formal sector, which is at 40% in 2019. We, will, we do expect that this has regressed as we look at the reports that have been released, especially in terms of the impact of COVID-19. We're seeing that women remain the face of poverty in this country, especially black women. And then we are saying, if we are to achieve what we are raising, there are things that we need to do. Interventions in terms of economic policies, which are summarized in the following. Within the mineral and energy resources, energy policy, sorry, uh, we are saying load shedding is crippling South Africa. That's an acknowledgement. And we have to restore energy security as it is critical for lifting confidence and investment and also creating jobs. Because the more we have load shedding, the more jobs are being lost, the more ca the country is not productive. We must improve ESCOM's performance, both in terms of operationally and financially. The procurement of electricity in terms of integrated resource plan has to be improved. All we are saying here, not really in terms of, because we shouldn't get ourselves more into procurement, but we are saying let's ensure that we implement the integrated resource plan. And if there are needs for us to be able to reflect on it and check in terms of reduction of the red tape, for example, the work that is being done on EIAs is very critical because now the identification of the rates, what we call the rates, the zones, where in terms of electricity or new generation capacity is being done, are assisting, but we want to see consistently the reduction of the time it takes for approvals. It will help in terms of ensuring that we have stabilization around electricity, but also we're paying attention into the transmission side and also demand management side. The NC will encourage exploration of mineral and gas, particularly for those critical resources linked to energy transition. Around infrastructure, we've actively said previously that um, infrastructure development becomes the key in terms of our recovery. But we are saying the important one is that we have to ensure that there is a, actually partnership between private sector and uh, public sector so that we can see the infrastructure investment strongly and we can start seeing all the construction across the country. But more focus is around closing the gap between rural and urban divide. An achievement of this project management capability must be built and regulatory complexities must be reduced for potential investors. We do think that there's still a lot of red tapes around in, uh, construction area, around infrastructure development, and that's why it's hampering the work that needs to be done. We continue around the issue of Regulation 28 of the Pension Fund to help mobilize funds for infrastructure. On, ma on manufacturing, we are saying South Africa needs to arrest the decline in its manufacturing sector and rejuvenate more inclusive industrialization through better coordinated industrial policy. 
But again, here, simplifying the process, ensuring that the red tapes are reduced and we can be able to see manufacturing happen. This should focus more on labor-intensive industries within the manufacturing sector. And we'll come to the digital environment because we believe that this will link to the manufacturing space. South Africa will need to improve its skill space and look to leverage localization and procurement instruments to boost the domestic manufacturing side. The improvement in industrialization will also require efficient infrastructure, improved integration as well in terms of linking us to the rest of the region and the world for more in investment in innovation. On the digital economy and the fourth industrial revolution, South Africa's recent release of Spectrum, which Comrade Dakota will go into detail on those areas, as he does the battle of ideas and all that. But from an economic point of view, we acknowledge in this and we do believe that this will support universal access for affordable and high-speed broadband, and also the work around that needs to be done in ensuring that we connect to the country. But we do acknowledge that the cyber security must also be strengthened for protection of personal data, government databases, and state-owned entities. On green economy, economic development, and job creation, South Africa, along with the rest of the world, must continue to transition towards a low-carbon economy and seek to exploit the opportunities created by the green economy. We've got to pay attention around the transitional method because we are quite strong that the just transition must not leave anyone behind and must include viable paths for workers and local communities dependent on the current high carbon activities. Local and international funds must be mobilized to ensure that there is a just transition. But when we talk about funding for um, climate change, we are saying it must be transparent in terms of the conditions. It must not compromise our sovereignty as a state. Land reform agricultural policy uh, I know I, take you, I see you are looking at your watch, I've taken long. Uh, land reform, agricultural policy, food security and rural economy. Uh, I'll just highlight two areas because they are more in detail in our paper. But the growth of the agricultural sector must be better supported through a more stable and conducive policy environment. Better infrastructure improvement municipality in terms of work between the three spheres of government. We must ensure that we continue to seek export market for the country's growing agricultural sector because there is quite a lot of opportunities, but the inclusion of black farmers in the agriculture and agro-processing sectors require increased funding in this area, and it's quite important. On state-owned entities, we are saying that the state-owned entities are critical for providing economic infrastructure that facilitate private sector economic activity by the business models of many SOEs are increasingly challenged. So we have that challenge, but also the issue that we must take undertake is comprehensive review of the state-owned entities portfolio to determine the balance of evidence in terms of what we have talked about previously that where we should consolidate, where we should reposition. So as we receive the reports of the last conference resolutions, we'll look into what have been done, how far are we, and what remains strategic. The question is around which are the strategic entities that must be protected in terms of the country, in terms of ensuring that they are able to service the country and serve the developmental need of this country. We have spoke, we, we reflect on the paper on employment programs and fair in terms of labor where we are reflecting that there must consistently be a protection of labor legislation and workers, especially in compliance with labor legislation. And there is acknowledgement that there is a need to look in terms of the processes around CCMA and strengthen them and that work. On the skills, we are acknowledging that the skills, um, scarce skills list has been re released, but there are critical skills that we still need for the economy and therefore work needs to be done in this area. In the paper, you'll see that we are talking about more the skills revolution required to support technical and vocational education and also community education and training colleges and a radical reduction of the school dropout is needed. But more work is being done by the education subcommittee in this. Our focus is more around the skills for the economy. On SMME, cooperatives, township and village economies, this is an area that most of the time we've received critical um, um, or criticism around that we don't seem to be doing well, but we don't seem to be paying attention to it. So one of the things that we are proposing, which is a major thing that we do believe that will assist, is that as a means of fostering economic development inclusion, uh, inclusive growth and employment creation, small, macro and medium-sized enterprises, cooperatives, as well as townships 
and village economies have to be understood that they have a role to play. And then we are proposing that the removal of macro enterprises, which operate best in the informal sector, are out of the small business regime so that they are able to be protected from the red tape and the requirements. Develop a national strategy for macro enterprise, which will include the development of a microfinance act. It's one of the new proposals that you pick up in the document as well around a small and especially the informal economy. And as I said, this is an area where majority of the black women who are remaining the face of the poverty in the country are playing. As I conclude on the African trade and development, we are saying that the African continental free trade area helps to connect 1.3 billion people by buying power across the continent. There's quite a great work that needs to be done in this and opportunities. We must use it as an instrument to advance the developmental integration of African economies. And we do believe that we should be able to reflect properly around this because it has an opportunity to create African production for higher values, but there's still an acknowledgement that as you look across the countries on the continent, there's issues of legislation that is different across requirements and that will need for us to be able to pay attention and make a South Africa our own contribution as we start this process. So to further the, uh, the strengthen the proposals that we are having, as the ETC we will be having a series of dialogues in which we will invite experts in various sectors, business, labor, and South Africans to give their inputs. The first one will start um, on Etinanda. We are hosting it on the 2nd of June, Etinanda at 7 or 1700. Uh, but people should not just walk in. You need to reserve your space. It's on first come, first service, online booking through our PBF. But also we are requesting written submission on the documents because I've not gone into everything based on time. But the documents are available, so would appreciate written submission. This is to stimulate discussions in the country. But we are calling for all South Africans to be part of this because policies of the NCs become policy of the country. And therefore, it is at this point that we need everyone to come on board. So the details where you submit will be provided by the communication team. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Comrade Mamulogo. I'm now going to invite Comrade Dakota Lehuete to speak on the uh, Battle of Ideas discussion document. Thank you very much, uh, Comrade Amos. Uh, good morning to all the colleagues from the media as well as the listeners and viewers at home. Look, uh, we, we are dealing with the part that deals with uh, communication and battle of ideas. I think we need to start uh, with the understanding of the context that we are tabling this particular policy discussion documents immediately uh, after coming out of uh, lockdowns, having a challenge of the sketch of COVID-19, having an economy that has released over 2 million people out of their jobs, having a challenge of floods, having a challenge uh, of uh, the slow economic growth. And, and I think these are some of the contexts that we need to understand. That as a governing party, we have the burden of leadership and responsibility to ensure that we deal with all these particular challenges. And we must also say that we are at a stage where we are dealing with uh, intermittent electricity supply, which uh, uh, has a negative impact on the economy. The matter of load shedding, as Comrade Mamluk has already alluded. And, and this particular load shedding also affects us at the level of communication in terms of our broadband as aspirations and ensuring that uh, we make uh, communication accessible to all. And I think uh, it's a matter that we, take, we need to take into consideration. But on our proposals in terms of our documents, what you have or what we have already went through, uh, there are specific policy areas uh, that we are looking at as the, as the, as the subcommittee. Uh, under the section on battle of ideas, uh, we deal with the changing dynamics in the national discourse and draws mainly from the assessment of the balance of forces. 
uh, at this space we know that as the NC we are challenged from all quarters not only political even uh, economic in terms of ensuring that we leverage the life of all South Africans and create a better life for all and I think it's a matter that even some amongst us uh, have a belief that uh, it's unachievable, ins insurmountable, uh, but we, we are confident that uh, the, lucha f the future looks very bright for all South Africans under the African National Congress. Uh, uh, under the media section, we'll examine policy development in respect to media diversity, uh, digital and print media. Uh, you'll see even in terms of the suggestions and proposals we're putting forward in our document, uh, they are also included. Uh, also in the section on ICT, uh, our report analyzes the progress against the goals set out in the integrated ICT policy white paper, the ICT policy and the South Africa Connect policy. Uh, these are some of the issues and areas we are putting a way forward from our previous conference resolutions and putting up proposal in terms of how we are going to implement them, uh, continue the assessment of our broadcasting policy developments uh, that canvasses topics such as uh, our radio, our television, our digital, our public broadcasting and the implications of uh, uh, broadcast uh, digital migration uh, that we have put up a target as the uh, ANC that at least by the end of June uh, most of our 9 million South Africans who are supposed to benefit from digital migration. Uh, we should have done so by the end of June. We have so far as the NC instructed our government to implement and they've been doing very well. We must commend Comrade Nchaveni, Comrade Kubai and the team uh, in our government for the work done so far in related to digital migration. We are also dealing with the issue of the postal services. Uh, our report surveys the progress made in licensing of the post bank. Uh, you know the post bank is one of the issues uh, that we have dealt with as the ANC from the 2007 conference in Bulugwani, Mangau, and now in Nazarek, uh, uh, the implementation of the po postal bank because we would want a bank that is accessible and owned by South Africans, but also a bank that can assist us in terms of the payment or make it easy, payments of social grants and other social amenities which are provided for by government. Because the post office, it's everywhere, every village, every township and every town. Uh, uh, we would further look at the transformation of the postal services uh, to accord with the demands of the modern society. So. It means, uh, as part of improving postal services, new modern uh, uh, facilities and amenities like the internet cafe and other related services uh, are, are some of the new services that would like the post office to consider as part of improving and modernizing the post office to the demands of modern society. The section on the digital transformation of the society examines the extent to which South African society has embedded new technologies in their way of life. Uh, you would be aware that uh, there's a rollout of the optic fiber as part of ensuring that we make broadband accessible to everybody, but we also make Wi-Fi cheaper for all our people to access it as part of ensuring that we advance uh, and connect all South Africans into the broadband. And, and, and that is what we are working towards and we would expect uh, uh, to be implemented. In the section on the fourth industrial uh, revolution, our, refer our report reflects on the proposals contained in the report by PC4IR. So uh, all those particular proposals, we have put them uh, forward, but uh, uh, in a nutshell, under each topic, the report recaps on the policy objectives, convinces how these objectives have been met since the 54th National uh, Conference and advances new policy proposal where applicable. So all that is contained in our uh, policy proposals, in our documents. You would know that uh, uh, where we are now, we have officially launched our documents. 
They are now at a level where they are engaged by society, our branches, and all the stakeholders. And immediately after that, they will then have to be processed by a policy conference. After being processed by a policy, national policy conference, they will then become draft policy proposals to be taken as resolution in the national conference that is going to come between the 16th and the 20th of December this year. So that is a, that is a process that we are going to undertake. Each subcommittee will have agreed that they will engage all stakeholders, uh, be it academics, uh, be it uh, opinion makers, be it the media, as part of our discussion uh, and to get proper inputs uh, generally from society in terms of the shape and direction that our policies need to take. So that is a process that we are going to undertake. And the same goes with uh, communications and, 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 the, and the battle of ideas. You know that in the battle of ideas, we struggle over uh, setting of the agenda and the ideas. And you know with the de development of the social media, that particular battle of ideas, it has increased. And it's a matter that we all have to work on and ensure that we, we improve on. So it's a terrain of struggle that is new. And as the ANC, we can't be left out in terms of this particular uh, engagement. We, we are looking also at print media. We are looking at ICT. We are also looking at the question of media ownership. Uh, those are some of the discussion in our content, including content regulation. We are also looking at the proposals of the SABC and the model for funding of the SABC as part of our proposals. They are all contained in our discussion documents and we hope this will work as a festival of ideas in terms of ensuring that we, we move South Africa forward, but not only South Africa, but we move even our economy to a higher trajectory because only at that stage would we be in a position to be solid to say we can build capacity in terms of skills development, we can build capacity in terms of job creation, and dealing with all the triple challenges of unemployment, inequality, and poverty. Because uh, in our thesis, uh, Comrade uh, Amos, those three areas uh, have been identified as uh, an albatross on our neck as a governing party. The question of dealing with uh, poverty, unemployment, and inequality, uh, access to the broadband, ensuring that uh, communication and battle of ideas covers all, uh, all members of society. I thank you. Um, thank you very much, uh, Comrade Dakota. Uh, I'm now going to allow members of the media to ask clarity uh, seeking questions uh, from uh, the two leaders that have just spoken now. And how we are going to run the process is as follows. You raise your hand, we note you, and then uh, you tell us who you are, where you're coming from, and then you, you proceed with uh, asking that particular question. So I'm going to, to note hands if there are any. Uh, Amina, Sisnunku. Uh, uh, or can you just assist us with the, the microphone? Uh, if, you, if you can just switch it on there, Amina. Is it on? Okay. Introduction. <laughs> yeah. No. No, no, no. It can go. Is it on? It's on. Okay. When you both stood there, you talked about all the new challenges that we've seen the floods, COVID 19, the riots, uh, basically, unemployment wasn't really a new challenge. It had been there before COVID 19. And having seen that we've got new problems, you the, the mask, maybe you are not audible enough. Yeah. Okay. 
So when you look at the, the, the current problems and you look at the previous policy documents, the economic policy documents, there isn't much difference. And I was expecting that in the, in the light of these new challenges, you would probably have new proposals uh, on the light of that there has been new challenges. Like for instance, COVID-19 wasn't there before. The riots weren't there before. So I was expecting something, or maybe can I get clarity whether there are going to be some new proposals in the light of the fact that we have new challenges. And you've actually said, and you've acknowledged and conceded, yes, we've got these new challenges that we're facing. So it is a little bit disappointing that you're standing here and giving us sort of a, almost a similar reflection to the previous policy document. And we're not feeling that you're tackling these new challenges that we currently have as a country and what the economy is going through. Okay. Um, is this no good? Not the this is even from SABC TV News. Um, one of the things that's often discussed in the economic spheres, business spheres, is that... Uh, all right, we come out of that dialogue on economic transformation currently underway at Lutuli House. This is by the ruling party. Uh, some of the key takeout points there, we heard how they spoke about the importance of inclusive economic growth, land reform, and the agriculture sector. And of course, saying that there must be a synergy between government and the people. We also heard how the state-owned enterprises are critical in providing certain economic infrastructure as well as we heard how there's more now a need for more uh, solutions to poverty and as you can see now as the question and answer session with members of the media I'm sure we will be taking you back to Nombumela Siziba who's watching that for us a bit later on in the program